Hello everyone and welcome to this painting tutorial with myself John. In this one we're going to be tackling a basic Soviet infantryman for bolt action. So this is a 28mm uh, infantry guy. Um, it's been a while since I did some of the World War II stuff or some of the historical stuff. That's absolutely fine, don't worry we haven't forgotten about you guys. You are the guys that watch the most of this stuff, so good. Um, again, as always, we're looking at, uh, like with the British infantrymen, simple ways to approach uh, units that are easy to follow and easy to batch paint and I think this guy is definitely no exception. So what you're going to get in the end is something that's going to look good on the tabletop. Remember we're always trying to aim for that on three colours up. What looks good on the tabletop from a gaming distance. So as always guys let's get down to the table and paint them. So to get started on our Russian uh, soldier here we're just going to take a quick look around the miniature and show you what we're working with. So <clears throat> He's carrying his PPSH. Uh, I'm making him a late war uh, Russian in this case, uh, mainly because he's carrying a Panzerfaust uh, through his bag there, sort of underneath his bag. I know this is a bread bag and it shouldn't be up here. I know they would they carried a big sort of sack uh, for their personal gear. I'm just taking a little bit of poetic license. Please don't hang me for that, um, because I liked how this looked on his back, the, uh, the Panzerfaust and everything up there. He's got a little bit of a grenade bag down here. He's got his uh, entrenching tool. I think this guy, to me, suits late war, sort of maybe Battle of Berlin, because he's carrying a Panzerfaust uh, that he's obviously captured. Got his entrenching tool, he's ready to uh, smack some people with that. However, that is basically all the miniatures. And as you can also see, I've primed in white this time. I don't know why. Um, but I have. I'm sure I won't regret that at all as I start putting dark colours over white primer. <laughs> so the first step is to put the base colours of the uniform down. And the uniform, unsurprisingly, is Vallejo model colour Russian uniform World War II. This is why you go with Vallejo. <laughs> so we have some of that down on my palette. It's quite thin out of the bottle. I think I've been using it for something else and maybe put some thinner in it. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of just giving everything a coat of this. It may need two coats because it's a little bit thin. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just cover our miniature with this. And once we have that done, we're then going to move on to our next step, which will be to highlight or to dry brush up the uniform color. We're not going to be doing anything else in the first few steps. We're going to be focusing mainly on the cloth of the uniform. With our Russian uniform down, uh, we can have a look around and see we've got a lovely uh, matte finish there. Uh, nice and dark, a little bit too dark, we want to fade that in a little bit. So what we're going to be moving on to now is a dry brush. And for that, we're going to be using Panzer Aces canvas again, another Vallejo color, because Vallejo is just the way we should do things. So I've got my small dry brush and I'm just going to remove a fair amount of the paint from it. Not too many issues with um, painting this over white. Two coats is definitely recommended for the uh, brighter base coat. So let's just very quickly dry brush up with our canvas. And what this should do is start to lighten the upper areas of the miniature a little bit. Just enough to make the uniform look a little bit faded, a little bit highlighted. Uh, stop it looking just as deep and dark as it currently does. We don't want it to be just... Uh, as deep as this, it looks a little too new. So we want to be uh, dry brushing it just to fade it up a bit and just make it a little bit more visually interesting. So I'll do this very quickly. Again, if you're doing this as part of a squad, you know, you're painting a, a number of them, you want to make sure that each step does something in the right direction. So we'll be doing this and then we're going to start looking at uh, some other colors here as well. So dry brush done, our next step is going to be taking all of the pouches and handles and stuff. So like the holder for his shovel, the bread bag, uh, the pouches on his belt, and we're going to be painting those again with the same color we've just dry brushed with. We're going to be using canvas for that. With the canvas down on all our pouches, we're going to then dry brush it with a little bit of Vallejo model color khaki. This is just to bring the color up a little bit and differentiate them from the rest of the uniform. It'll also help stand them out uh, when they're in a group and 
you're looking at them from you know your typical gaming distance so we're going to take our small dry brush here and just highlight up the pouches with that done we're going to move on to our next base coats which is going to cover our boots and parts of our weapon and for this we're going to be using decay black from scale uh scale model color so or scale 75 my my apologies there so again just another base coating step we want to make sure we get our boots because they're wearing jack boots and i like the decay black because it's not your typical deep black it's kind of an off black kind of very dark gray and it sort of suits the more historical uh kind of periods that we're we're painting in here Now the black is on his boots and the metalwork of the PPSH, we're going to move on to the woodwork and the leather, which are all going to be the same color, and we've chosen chocolate brown from Vallejo Model Color for that. So again, just a case of another base coating step. It'll all make sense eventually, I hope. <laughs> With the brown down on the leather work, the belt and the woodwork of the weapon, we're going to move on to the skin. And for the skin, we're doing a base coat of Kislev Flesh from Citadel. We're doing this because we're going to be putting a contrast paint over the top of it. And this way, uh, doing it with this sort of color first, lets us have a nice bright base uh, before we do anything else. So we're going to go on ahead and just apply the Kislev Flesh to all his skin. At this point as well, we need to remember to start being a bit more neat with the application of our paint as well. Now we have, we've had to be neat for the last few steps, but we need to be a little more neat now as we move into the smaller details. But of course we can always return to our colors, our base colors, if we make a mistake. With the skin now down, we can have a look and see that we've got it pretty neat and tidy looking there was a couple of little corrections i had to do next we're going to move on to the color of his helmet and for the helmet we're going to be using again vallejo model color camouflage olive green for that one this is because this is more of sort of a generic olive green it's not a particular shade or anything like that and the helmets and stuff on the the russians is very much sort of a less dark or a less intense uh, olive green compared to a lot of what the allies used so it seems a good middle ground now it may not be the perfect shade but it certainly wouldn't be far off so we're just going to give the helmet a good coat of that and then when we come back we'll look at the Panzerfaust while the green on the helmet is still drying we're going to move on to the Panzerfaust and for the Panzerfaust we're going to be using Vallejo uh, German camouflage beige World War II. Kinda, again, not a surprising color choice really. Uh, that's just the color they were. So we're going to be taking that from my palette. And again, we're going to be carefully painting in our Panzerfaust. So this may, again, because we've primed white, is going to need a couple of coats. The helmet has already had two coats put on it as well. So it's just going to be a case of carefully going over the Panzerfaust and just getting that color down and then probably having to do it again just to make sure the coat that we give it is good enough so again we're coming in on the end so just be careful take your time With the Panzerfaust now base coated, we're going to move on uh, to our, our return to our skin tone. And for this, we're going to be using a contrast paint, Dark Oath Flesh. So a little bit of a darker color uh, for the skin this time uh, than what I usually do, which is fine. We just want to start or get this uh, step down because after this, it's going to be basically wrapping up the model with a, a wash and maybe a couple of other little bits. So. I wanted to go Dark Oath just because it's a little bit different to what I usually do. Make a little bit of a more ruddy sort of skin tone. I kind of want our uh, our Russian soldier here to look like he's a bit more of a veteran. You know, if this is Battle of Berlin kind of period or sort of more late war, 
I want him to look like he's been out and about a lot more, so a bit more of a tanned uh, skin tone. Because it would be coming into the summer, basically, and yeah, you know, just make him a little bit more tanned. So we'll get this down, and then once it's dry, we should be ready to give the whole model a wash. With the contrast paint now down and dry, we're going to move on to our essentially second to last step. Um, maybe we'll put an extra one in as well, but uh, usually I would go in with a little bit of silver and do the gun here. But I actually kind of like it as it is. Maybe one advantage of having primed white, it does have a little bit of highlighting to it. So what we're going to be moving on to now is a wash. Uh, and this wash is from Green Stuff World Ancient Sepia. And this is going to go over the entire model, including the skin, because we want to ruddy the whole model down and just blend it all in a little bit. So I'm going to thin the wash out a little bit with some water because I... I like Ancient Sepia because it has a touch of a greenish tone to it as well as just a brown. So it'll help shade and tone everything a little bit more. So just going to be a matter of putting this all over the model. And when that's done, I'll have the base painted uh, probably in a dark brown. And we'll have given the model a matte varnish as well. And the matte varnish, of course, will be my um, AK Interactive Ultra Matte as well, just to let you know that. So when we come back, the model should be finished and we'll see how he looks. With our base painted and our miniature given a matte varnish, we now have our little Soviet soldier finished and ready for the table. Now, as always, I like to stress that we're painting for tabletop here. We're not painting for display. And I know I say that a lot and you're probably going to tell me, oh, just shut up about that already. Um, but it's always good to remember that this miniature is finished to a tabletop standard, but yeah, you know, more or less, it's been painted to a degree that I would be happy to play with. Of course, there's always details you can go back in and sort out yourself. For example, the belt buckle in there that has the little star that could be done in brass. Um, you could probably put a couple of red color tabs on or something like that, just to add a bit of flash of color. Um, there's buttons and buckles that could also be done as well. However, He's ready to join a squad and in and amongst an entire squad painted the exact same way, nice and simple. This will look very effective as an army, particularly once you have some basing down, a few grass tufts. This should look absolutely great. So without any, any other sort of uh, rambling, I just want to say I hope you've enjoyed this one and you've remembered that no matter what you're painting, always paint to what you want to achieve. So if you're doing, doing tabletop, go for that. Uh, if you're wanting a higher standard, do remember that there's going to be a more, uh, a heavier time sink involved in doing something like that. However, I think this tutorial has been pretty concise and straightforward, and we've got a miniature that we can put in with the squad. And if you're batch painting, you've done a, an entire unit, perhaps in an afternoon uh, or over the course of a weekend, depending on how big your units are. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.